Hi, this is Brad Linder for Download Squad, and uh, this is part two in our series of a look at the Asus EEE PC user interface. This time we're going to look at some of the more advanced features that are not readily uh, available right out of the box. As we mentioned uh, previously, Asus ships this with what's called an easy mode uh, version of the interface. We had heard originally that there was going to be an advanced mode that would look more like a typical Xandros Linux uh, desktop using the KDE environment. That does not seem to be the case. Some of the uh, uh, people over at the eeeuser.com forums have managed to sort of hack their way to that state of Xandros Nirvana, but uh, it's, it's not something that's officially supported by Asus right now. And we're going to look at a couple of other things that aren't supported. First off, let's do a couple of things that you can do. So uh, this is a Linux machine, so a lot of what you do in Linux is based in the terminal. So how do you open a terminal? There's two ways. One, you can go to Final Manager and click Tools and open a console window. And there you have a nice, big, pretty console window. The other way to do it is actually to hold Control-Alt-T and it opens smaller little terminal here. So let's go with the, the big one because it's easier to use. You can do a lot of the basic things that you can do in Linux, app get install, for example. But right now, you only have access to the repositories uh, of software that are available from Asus for this particular unit. So the first thing you might want to do is actually add a couple of repositories. That can be a little dangerous because some software is really not going to run perfectly on here. Uh, for example, the first thing I wanted to install was Audacity for doing digital audio editing. And I tried getting that through a Xandros repository, it didn't work, so I went to Debian, which is uh, really not necessarily supported here, but I was able to get Audacity up and running. And let me show you how. First, let's do it the hard way. So uh, here we have a terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the root directory. Then I'm going to go to cd etc and cd out. If you look at the contents of this directory, there should be a file called sources list. And if you type nano, n-a-n-o, sources list, you can edit it. Um, I don't have super user or uh, administrator privileges right now though, so I'm going to go ahead and exit and type sudo nano sources dot list. And you can see here, well I don't know how clearly you can see, I added a third repository because there are two that uh, Asus sets up for you. I added http dot us dot debian dot org slash debian slash stable main and this gives you access to a whole lot of applications so i'm going to hit and hit control x to save and exit and then i was able to type sudo apt get install audacity and since all audacity is already installed it tells me that it's up to the newest version but I can also launch Audacity just by typing Audacity. Choose a language, English, and there you go. We have a full-fledged audio editing application, which unfortunately, now that it's installed, it's still not available through any of these tabs. So this is one of the disadvantages to using the easy mode. You can install extra software but you don't have access to putting the shortcuts on your desktop. So this is one of the reasons why it would be nice to be able to add a full uh, interactive start menu and, and so forth. But if we go back to the terminal here, you can launch Conqueror just by typing Conqueror. And this brings up sort of an alternate way to browse everything on your desktop here. So if we click on Applications, for example, Click on Applications again. Under Multimedia, there's a shortcut for Audacity. So it takes a little more getting to than just clicking uh, an icon on the desktop, but you actually can add applications to this menu here. And you can see some of the other applications that are already pre-installed, such as the Sound Mixer, SM Player, uh, Audio CD Ripper. These are, these are the uh, same applications that you can get through the play tab 
It's just that they have different, less descriptive names. So for example, if you click UC View, the same application pops up as if you had clicked the webcam icon here, which is, not surprisingly, a web camera. And that's me. There's a couple of other things you can do once you're in Conqueror. Uh, you can see the applications here. So here's your office applications. And again, these are mostly the same applications you saw elsewhere, but it turns out there's actually a couple of extra things. For example, administrator tools. So if you want to get an administrator console, you could just type sudo bash and open up a console with administrator privileges from the terminal, or you could have access to the file manager with administrative privileges by clicking this icon. And it says file manager administrator. So there you go. The other thing that's kind of exciting here is there's a synaptic package manager. So we showed you the, the sort of hard way to add a repository and install software. You can do the same thing with a graphical user interface here. As long as you know the name of the repository, you can click new and enter it here. We're not actually entering one, so there you go. And unlike the add remove programs dialog, which we saw in the easy mode, you have access to a lot of programs here. and you can search for them. So if we wanted to, again, install Audacity, we would just search. And there it is. So you can right click, mark for reinstallation, removal, or complete removal. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do here because it is running a full version of Xandros Linux, it's uh, just that there's a stripped down interface that's made re readily available to you. So for example, another thing is you can connect to a remote desktop. You can connect to Palm Pilots. You can schedule tasks. You can manage your network connections, printers, external display. So you get a lot more control over the settings if you're a more advanced user, if you go in through Conqueror as opposed to using the, uh, the default view. So there's a quick look at uh, some of those features. Now, because this is a small laptop with a small screen and a fairly small amount of uh, internal memory, you're probably best off going with just the applications that come with the unit or the applications that Asus makes available down the road because they're gonna be designed to, to play well with this small screen. For example, I wasn't really that impressed with any of the image editing applications on here, and I could have tried to go ahead and install uh, the GIMP or, or some other application, but because it connects so well to the internet, what I've wound up doing instead is using the EEE PC to connect to web services like Picnic or uh, Picky FX to do image editing that way. So the tool, it winds up being a really useful tool for blogging on the go for me, for example, because I can connect to the internet, I can type up documents, I can upload images, I can edit images, I can save images, I can do a lot of things without necessarily needing to install more software. You can expand the storage to some degree. This unit comes with four gigs of built-in memory. As I mentioned, only a small portion of that is available. There is, however, a SD card slot. So you can put in an external memory card, uh, you can attach a USB hard drive, and in terms of RAM, it comes with 512 megs of RAM, and if you really want to disassemble the unit and uh, replace the RAM, you can. Uh, you will void the warranty. That's not something that Asus recommends doing right now. So some people have tried it, but if you want to get the most bang for your buck, you're probably best off just using the unit as is. That said, every now and again, you're going to want to try and install some sort of little application or program that's going to make your life a little bit easier. For example, Audacity for me, since I do some audio production, and you can do it, and odds are it's going to run just fine. And when all else fails, you can restore this to the factory default settings just by, as I mentioned earlier, hitting F9 during the reboot process. So there you go. It's a complete laptop. It's the Asus EEE PC, and um, this is Download Squad.